this illusion is called sacrifice. I love the elongation of the arm and the poise of the leg stepping over its own body. The pose itself is aggressive, yet passive. <laughs> passive aggressive, the pinning of its own hand while the other is depleted trying to free itself. It says so much. And that was just a concept sketch. When I put it in painting form, I was like, oh, wow, wow. So I'm super happy with this. I don't really have much to say about it other than that. I love it. I love it so much. It came together in an hour and 15-ish minutes, although it felt like longer for some reason. I already have in a strange relationship with time, if you don't know, but this time didn't fly so much as it really slowed down. Like, I really felt like time was inching along. Working on these 9 by 12 pages, I have to be more methodical in how I approach putting down paint so that I'm not wasting it, and more importantly, so the painting builds gradually. And that's the thing with the technique I have. Things can really go awry in a unique way. And I've observed in watching my own videos and just in doing them that my paintings don't really make sense or come together until the end. If you don't watch until the end, I doubt they make much sense. At least to me, they aren't all at once in a lovely disharmony of color. With the most recent paintings, I've attempted to start the painting with the hands in a sort of effort to preserve them. And in this one, I kind of think I succeeded that. Changing the subject, I discovered Vanessa Semina's Pick a Card readings, and I must say she's the only Pick a Card tarot reader I've ever vibed with. It's very weird. Her readings really resonate with me. Like She's really tapped in, telling me about myself. And I occasionally do my own readings, and they're all right. I just don't think I'm a good card reader. I usually act on intuition, feeling, random thoughts at times, although not without thinking things through or like taking things on that I don't think I can do. And I, I mean, I just don't want to jump to conclusions. Callie just pops into my head. I know what I want. I brush it off and try to act all nonchalant. I notice everything, I just act like I don't. I really miss her drunken babble mixtape era and... Even her Poor Vita era. Not to mention that song On Edge that she did with Snoop Dogg. It is not on Spotify. And I'm just like, why is it? Why is it not on Spotify? Her whole vibe is so different now. Don't get me wrong. People, artists, have a right to change and grow. But it's just, I don't know. Mm, it's not. It's not for me. I'm backpedaling now. <laughs> because my mind's a little erratic. A little jumpy. Um... The thought of fermenting. I read this short story, Lenora, by Erville Worrell from the Women of Weird Tales book, which I've talked about before, so I'm not going to go on about it. Don't judge me for taking so long to read each story and the fact that I've also read them all out of order. It's, I don't know. Short stories are, it's, it's a rough and bumpy transition from author to author because the writing styles can be so starkly different. And with this one, the woman, the girl, she's only 16, 17, something like that, Lenora gets in a car with a stranger in the wee hours of the morning and is writing this account from the hospital, basically her deathbed. And since she's probably not going to read it, it turns out she ends, up, she ends up taking a ride with death. She was found 3,000 miles away from her house in a cemetery, clutching a skeleton finger, raving mad. That's what they say. Uh, but I'm like, imagine living in the middle of the country, walking home from a friend's house and accepting a midnight ride under a full moon. And oh, oh, Erville really built up the atmosphere. It was haunting, beautiful, eerie, and enchanting. So the ending, her death, was a bit anticlimactic. And even then, like, people kind of, the doctors were, like, skeptical about her death. Like, so it was, like, it was even more underwhelming. The doctor's like, it's not even really a real thing, but we can't really explain it. Doctors. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, she knew the whole time when she was writing, because she did bring up, you know, 
the death being at her doorstep, basically, you know? And she did ride in a coffin. I don't know how she didn't notice the coffin. You know, the car was a coffin. And that the skeleton, the, the man had a skeleton face. Didn't make any damn sense. I'm like, ugh, that would never be me. Could never be me, you know? Anyway, if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on. So I will. Thank you for watching.